Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to today's broadcast. It's a bit later today, 25 to 4, but doesn't matter. Some of you don't get to watch it till late in the night or the following day, so never mind. Shall we pray first? Lord, we thank you for another day. Thank you for the rain. I'm so grateful for it for my garden. Although I still want to do more out there, in the rain, but I can't do too much. But Lord, I pray that you will bless us today as we study your word and we learn more about the book of Daniel. And Lord, the next three chapters, Lord, are the most important ones in the book. So help us to read and to study them over the next few days, three, four days, however long it takes. I pray that you will help us now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, before I start reading, guys, I'm going to read what's in my notes here from ttb.org. And it's got a head in chapter 10 to 12. These three chapters constitute one vision. Some Bible scholars count this last vision as the most important in the book of Daniel. This section is remarkable from several viewpoints. Let's just look at the notes for chapter 10 today. Chapter 10. The seriousness and sincerity of Daniel is obvious here. For three weeks he observed the time of fasting. Fasting is not a rule for believers today. That means that not many people do it. Yet if you do, you will find the benefits of it. Even if you fast one day or fast one meal, you will find the benefits of it. Let me take my back brace out of the way. You don't want to see that, do you? <laughs> um, so fasting is not a rule for believers today but it is I believe that we should pray and fast today even though that sounds as if it means that we shouldn't the more you pray and fast the more you experience more of God and you die into yourself and God sees your sacrifice and he will honour you for that fast and prayer but it has its merits and rewards for those willing to pay the price are you willing to pay the price to fast one meal, to fast a day or a week or whatever it is that God puts on your heart. It's worth considering or doing that as part of your weekly, daily or a weekly way of life. I find if I do fast, I find if I fast from six o'clock in the evening to six o'clock the following evening. And I do that sometimes and I find that works for me. But you might find a different thing works for you. So try something out. Some people can't do that. Some people uh, will say, right, I won't, I'll fast so many cups of coffee a day or cups of tea or things like that. Whatever you can do, God will honour the fast, okay? So don't be afraid to do it too fasting. There's lots of different ways you can fast. There are many different types of fast. There's a Daniel fast, as it's called, and that's just on vegetables and water, you know? And look how healthy they were. If you read the book of Daniel, we studied a little bit of that, didn't we? So let's look at that. There are many rewards for those who are willing to pay the price. The delay in the answer to Daniel's prayer was caused by a satanic hindrance. The angel sent to answer his prayer was blocked by one of Satan's emissaries of higher rank and greater power, labelled the prince of the kingdom of Persia which we will read when we start reading in verse 13 of chapter 10. The angel had to go for reinforcements. See, there is a spiritual warfare, there's a spiritual battle going on. And we are part of that if we are believers. We should be willing to take up arms and to fight against the works of Satan. Even in prayer now during COVID-19, we should be doing spiritual warfare and reading the word and praying every day for victory over that so that our family and our friends would be protected during this time. Sometimes it takes a few days. The year it took Daniel nearly three weeks to get an answer to his prayer. So don't be, you know, in a way you feel that you've got to rush prayer and it's got to be answered yesterday because sometimes it doesn't happen that way because of spiritual warfare and also because God has said no it's not the right time and there's always the perfect timing with God read Ecclesiastes 
and there's talks about a time and a season for everything. So, you know, study the Word of God and you will find how that, that sometimes things don't happen just like that. It takes a matter of time. Like when Daniel was praying, the angel couldn't get through to answer that he was sent by God because there were in a, there were uh, hindrances in the way. There was blockages in the spirits. The demons were fighting the angel not to come and do what God had sent them to do. So, you know, give it time. Keep praying. Persevere. Do not give up when you're praying for something. If it's according to God's will and purpose, he will fulfill it. And he sees your sacrifice when you do pray and fast. Prayer and fasting work together. The angel had to go for reinforcements. Michael the archangel came to remove the blockade. Michael's a warrior angel. You can read many passages in the scripture about uh, Michael being a warrior angel. This reveals the spiritual warfare in which we are all engaged. I'm going back to the notes now. See Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 18. Most people know about that. And it's the war, the armour of God and fighting in the spiritual battle. And also in 2 Corinthians 10 verse 3 to 6. There are different ranks of both good and bad angels. Daniel needed to be strengthened by his contact with the supernatural. I like these footnotes because it gives us a little bit more of background and gives us some things to think about and discuss. Let's look. Right, that's all the full notes on chapter 10 for today. Tomorrow, tomorrow we we'll, may get through into to, to chapter 11. We'll see how things go. Right, Daniel sees a heavenly messenger. Chapter 10 and verse 1. In the third year of King Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and had understanding of the vision. In those days, the thing... Excuse me. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. See, called mourning and fasting and prayer. That's calling out to God, crying out to God. And that's what I said in our study yesterday. We should be groaning and crying out to God for him to move during this situation. That our churches can reopen. That God will protect his people from the onslaught of Satan. We, we must be doing this for one another. That's why we need to get back together and to worship and pray together. Because we can do it on our own. But there's more power when we pray and fast and do things together. And in those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hiddekel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girt with fine gold of Ufaz. Ufaz, I'm not sure how to say that. His body also was like the beryl, and his face was the appearance of lightning, and his eyes were as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in colour to polished brass. And the sound of his words like the word voice of a multitude. And I saw and saw alone, and I, Daniel, saw alone the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a general quaking fell upon them. They were scared. Something was going on and they didn't quite understand it by the looks of it. So that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone. And saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. Daniel was bound to be weak after three weeks of fasting, and he was felt his weakness, and he was a bit afraid as well at this vision. Yet, I heard the voice, his, the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, and was that then was I in a deep sleep, and on my face, 
and my face towards the ground. He looked, sounds like he was lying prostrate on the floor on his face. Verse 10. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. So he was in a kneeling position with his hands on the floor. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. I think I would have been scared too, wouldn't you? If you had a supernatural vision and an and experience, you would be frightened too. There, verse 12, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, what does that chastening mean? Make sure you're right before God. Correct yourself if you've been doing things not in your own strength and not in God's ways. God's ways. Thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdoms of Persia withstood me. The prince of kingdom of Persia. That means the strong man over Persia. The demon that was in charge over Persia. Withstood the messenger and tried to stop him from coming. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty-one days. And... 21 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face towards the ground, and I became dumb. I couldn't speak. I was petri he was petrified, in a sense, you know, petrified, frozen, that he couldn't speak or say anything. <clears throat> and behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the visions, O Lord, my, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I return no, retain no strength. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? How could he talk to this angel? Because he was terrified, you know? And he was dumb, like I said. He was almost petrified, as they say. Frozen, that he couldn't speak or move. But then he, the angel helped him to speak, touched his lips that he could speak. Verse 17. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, Talk with this, my Lord. For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither was is there any breath left in me. Let's have a look at some more notes here um, in my Bible. Verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 1. This is Daniel's first vision. Final vision, sorry. We read his first vision a couple of days ago. This is Daniel's final vision, 536 BC. In it, he is given further insight into the great spiritual battle between those who, pro who protect God's people and those who want to destroy them. There is also more detailed information on the future, specifically the struggles between the Ptolemies and kings of the south and the Seleucids, kings of the north. Why didn't Daniel return to Jerusalem? He may have been too old to make the, the long, hazardous journey, because as we know, this was the end of the 70 years. He was over 80. His government duties could have prevented him, or God may have told him to stay behind to complete the work he was called to do. We read about the river Hidekal, which is also known as the Great Tigris River. So if you looked on a map, you could see it flowing through Babylon. I've seen that myself. Daniel 4, 5, uh, 10, verse 5 and 6. The person seen by Daniel was a heavenly being. This is believed by some commentators to be an appearance of Christ. 
See Revelation chapter 1 verse 13 to 15. We studied that a few weeks ago. While others contended, it, contend it is an angel but he could, because he required Michael's help. 10 verse 13. In either case, Daniel caught a glimpse of the battle between good and evil supernatural powers. Verse 10 to 18 says, Daniel was frightened by this vision, but the messenger's hand calmed his fears. Daniel lost his speech, but the messenger's touch restored it. Daniel felt weak, but the messenger's words strengthened him. God can bring us healing when we are hurt, peace when we are troubled, and strength when we are weak. Ask God to minister to you as he did to Daniel. Many of us are feeling weak at the moment. We feel in, we have no strength, we have no energy, or we feel that we you know, anxious about either going out or not going out and all these other things. But if we turn to God, he will help us to overcome these things and he will strengthen us. Ask God to minister to you as he did to Daniel. And Daniel chapter 12, verse 12, uh, Daniel 10, verse 12 to 13. Although God sent a messenger to Daniel, powerful obstacles, detained the messenger for three weeks. Daniel faithfully continued praying and fasting and God's messenger eventually arrived. Answers to our prayers may be hindered by unseen obstacles. Don't expect God's answers to come too easily or too quickly. Prayer may be challenging, challenged by evil forces, so pray fervently and pray earnestly. Then expect God to answer in his good time. And we just discussed that as well. But you know what I find? Sometimes I don't know what to pray. But for those of you who are being baptised with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, it happened today. I, was, I really felt I had to pray about something. I still don't know what it was about. Hello. But, it's going to be a cool feeling. We but, had, especially sorry. in the strong winds. Oh. My uh, thing come on and where the forecast are up. So never mind. But I was, we were coming back. I was being out and I felt I just had to pray. My mouth was moving, but no sound was coming out. But I, in my head, I was speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. So, you know, who knows what that was about? God hasn't shown me yet. Maybe I was praying for someone in particular. Or maybe God wanted to pray for our safety outside on the road. I don't know. But sometimes we have to pray when God leads us to pray. And we ne we don't always know what that is about. But be don't be afraid to do that. My mouth was moving but no sounds were coming out. But I knew what was going on. You know, somebody else who's not a Christian or a believer wouldn't understand that. But we do. Because God prays through us you the holy spirit can uses us to pray in the spirit and uh, sometimes we got to ask god for the understanding we don't always get it when it's personal but if it's for the church and we have tongues then we got to seek with the interpretation of the tongues anyway i'm not that isn't the message here but you know just an example if we got to pray and persevere Whatever it is that God is trying to tell us. So, you know, keep on, keep on praying, keep on seeking God. And God will reveal things in his time, in his time. Ecclesiastes, again, we just mentioned that earlier. Verse 18 of chapter 10. Then there came and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. He gave Daniel strength, he encouraged him, he lifted him up. And said, O oh man, greatly beloved. And we are all greatly beloved of God. But the more we sacrifice ourselves for God, whether in prayer or fasting or going without something or serving somebody else, God will bless us and God will strengthen us. And we are the beloved of God. We are his family and his children. So if you're feeling lonely at the moment and you're troubled, God is with you. Remember that. Turn to him and he will strengthen you. He will send his angels to look after you, guard you, guide you, keep you and restore you to health. I was strengthened, said Daniel, and said, 
Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? Then said, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. She was prophesying that after uh, the prince of Persia and the Babylonians and all the Persians and the Medes, that all that was destroyed. The, now we're talking about the Persians. Then the prince of Greece will arrive. That's the strong man, the satanic strong man, the devil's worker who is over, over Greece shall come and attack. And that's why these angels were fighting them. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. Michael the archangel, the powerful warrior angel, was to come and support um, Daniel. And the other angels were going to fight a spiritual battle. There is a great battle going on in the heavenlies at the moment where God's army is are fighting satanic and until God opens the first seal then he will allow them through and uh, you know that's why we need to be prepared to fight too. We should be fighting now every day. There is a demonic attacks going on. People are experiencing weird experiences in the spiritual realm as well as in the physical. I had it this week myself, a whole day of it, day before yesterday. And I had to seek God and pray and pray through to victory, to plead the blood of Jesus Christ over my family and my home. And we must all do that. I was looking to get some oil today to anoint the house. I'll have to try something. But we need to keep anointing ourselves with oil as a symbolic of God's protection of the blood of Jesus Christ. Right, anyway, that's the message for today. So I hope you will find something in that that will help you and will encourage you to press on, to keep persevering in prayer until you see the breakthrough. And we must continue to do that, praying for one another, praying for our brothers and sisters, praying that our churches will be open, our prayer we may be able to meet together, to pray, to seek God, to have the preaching of the word, to be built up and encouraged. Amen. So now let's come before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you, as I said already, for the rain. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for air that we can breathe, Lord, and Lord, food that we can eat, we thank you for everything that you've blessed us with. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless each hearer. Lord, that we will not become just hearers of your word. We would become doers of your word. We would act on it and we would be prepared for the final battles, the battles that we have to face every day. Lord, that you will help us stand strong. And Lord, as Satan comes in like a roaring lion, Lord, we can, you will raise up a standard against him. If we pray and persevere, Lord, your protection will be upon our families, our homes, Lord, our streets. But Lord, help us, Lord, to take on that challenge, to pray through to victory. Lord, we pray for those who are serving you today, even in our hospitals, in our community, pharmacies, supermarkets, um, out there, Lord, our police force, our uh, ambulance service, our fire service. Lord, that you would be with them, Lord, and they would come to know you as Lord and Saviour, that you would rise up Christians within these areas, that, Lord, they will witness to their brothers and sisters, to their workmates. Lord, we just pray in the name of Jesus for your protection and your covering. We pray for our government, Lord, that they will begin to make the right decisions, Lord, and make decisions, Lord, that will benefit the people, but also benefit your church, your body. The Lord, within the next few weeks, we will be able to open our churches again and have our services again. That we will build up and encourage those who are failing and struggling in their faith. The Lord have lost their way, Lord. I pray for those who have lost their way in you, Lord, that they would pick up your word, would study it and persevere in your word, that, Lord, they would know that your voice is speaking to them. 
Lord, that nothing, no weapon passioned against them shall prosper, or tongue that is raised shall stand, because we have authority and power in Jesus' name over all the works of Satan, and Satan cannot touch us if we are walking faithfully before God. He will try and tempt us away, but Lord, we will know the victory, because you are with us. Lord, we thank you that you said you would never leave us or forsake us even into the end of the age. That nothing, as I said the other day, can pluck us out of your hand unless we decide to go well out of your hand. Satan can't take us out, no other person can. But Lord, we can step out of your will and purpose. And then we'll be open to attack. So help us to remain faithful to you. In Jesus' name, I pray your protection. Now, in the name of Jesus, God bless you. Keep you, make his face shine upon you, that he may be gracious unto you, and lift up his countenance on you, and give you his peace, his shalom. So, brothers and sisters, if you've enjoyed this message, if you've got something out of it, share it with others, and uh, like and subscribe to, to the broadcast, because we need more people to hear the word of God in these last days. And I pray that you will also check everything I said out. Look it up in the scriptures for yourselves. Because I may have made mistakes. I do make mistakes. I'm only human. So you must test it yourself. Ask God to reveal to you what I'm saying. If it's true or false. And ask God to open up the scriptures to you. That you may know the truth. For if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Amen. God bless.